Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to, to join us today. It's really wonderful to have everybody here. I can see there's uh, many of you in the in the audience. I'm just sorry that we weren't able to, to have you on campus and be able to show you some of the wonderful buildings and laboratories that we, we have. But I suppose under the circumstances, it's really great to still be able to tell you a little bit about what we do, who we are, and be able to answer some of the questions that you might have. My name is Brandon Collier-Reed, and I am the Head of Department of Mechanical Engineering. And thank you so much for taking the time to come and spend a few minutes with us this morning to, to find out a little bit more about us. Um, we've got a, a full day today. Um, what we've got is a, a welcome by me. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what mechanical engineering is and what it is that we can offer you. We're going to have a, uh, a, a short presentation by our head class representative, Chase Newell, and then there will be an opportunity at the end for you to ask some questions of us, because it's often in the questions and answers that, that your most pressing needs are, are dealt with. All right, um, I, seeing so many people in the audience is wonderful, but it's also nice for us to know that there are people from local, people from far away, and people from around the world actually that are joining us. So if you have a moment, it would be really nice in the chat, if you could just type in, I can see the chat on the side of our screen, and it'll be really nice to be able to see whereabouts in the country or in the world, in fact, you, you are joining us from, just so I can get a sense of who it is that I'm talking to. Um, the, let's just start a little bit about mechanical engineering. We are uh, 100 years old. Uh, we're very proud of, of our department. I'm really proud of the team that make up our department. And more importantly, what I really find amazing is the energy that the students bring into the mix. You'll know over the last uh, two years, the COVID-19 pandemic has been quite um, challenging. We've had uh, lots of, of, of things to have to deal with. Um, we've had uh, fully online lectures that have taken place, but increasingly we're having our students come onto campus for structured engagement around specific topics. And what it's been amazing to have people back on campus. So uh, for all of you that are, are thinking about where you're going to go and study next year, uh, I think you're going to be coming into a very different environment now, one where uh, hopefully you're going to be spending far more time, more of your time, far much more of your time on campus in an environment where the, 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 the teaching and learning takes place. Of course, what we've done is we have learned a lot over these last two years about teaching and learning, about online learning, and about how we can draw some of the best from that environment and bring it into our mainstream offering so that we can really give you the, 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 best, um, uh, the best education possible. Uh, uh, we offer two programs in our department. We have one in mechanical engineering, and we have one in mechanical and mechatronics. Um, and these are, are two programs which carry equal weight in our department, and we've got a, a, an, an even balance between, um, uh, between the two programs. But I do just want to start out by telling you, in fact, that it doesn't matter where you go and study in South Africa. If you, it doesn't matter which engineering program you study, which university you study at it, they're all high quality really good educations. If you study here, at the Mosh at Bits or at UP, wherever it might be, you're going to get a high quality education. And the reason for that is that the Engineering Council of South Africa accredits our qualifications every five years. So we went through a process uh, last year where the Engineering Council came to our department. They spent uh, a couple of days really, really closely going through all the the material that we, we present to our students, um, how we assess our students, etc. And we came through that with flying colors. Uh, so we were fully accredited for the next five years. So those of you that will be joining us next year will um, be joining an accredited degree program. We're very really proud of that. But I just want to point out that that the other um, engineering providers in the country are, are, are also accredited. Um, but of course, we just believe that we are, are better than the rest of them. Uh, we offer, a, we think that we offer a, a, a better quality education. But of course, we would say that wouldn't be. <laughs> um, so uh, um, what I think I want to do is I want to just also brag a little bit. The, you, you know, we, we uh, I, I did a, a welcome to our postgraduate students yesterday. And, and during that presentation, um, I, I said to them, you know, the, 
the, the one thing that that happens around the world is that there are these rankings that take place and and the QS rankings for 2021 that's last year were released recently and and of course uh, when the rankings are good for you you believe them and you say they are the best thing ever uh, and of course they were good for us so I'm telling you how wonderful they are for us um, UCT was ranked as the best having the best engineering departments in South Africa which were um, which we're very, very pleased about. Um, and mechanical engineering, the Department of Mechanical Engineering was ranked as the best engine mechanical engineering department in South Africa and second in Africa, only behind Cairo University. So that's something we're very proud of. And the thing about that is that it's it's we, we are this department we are because of the team that we have that works together to allow that to happen. So if you look at the slide at the moment, let me make it a little bit bigger for you to be able to see it. Uh, what you can see there is you can see some of our academic and, and support colleagues and, and professional support staff on the one side of the slide. You can see you as graduates in the other corner of the slide because, of course, that's why you're wanting to come to UCT so that you can end that's it, on graduation day with some of our students. You'll see the green around their necks that's highlighting the, the colors of, of engineering and the built environment. And that's they, they do, they've got their degree certificates in their hand. And then the other part of this, you've got the, our staff, we've got the students, and we've also got an amazing campus. So what you can see there is a is a photo from the bottom of the steps of the Sarah Bartman Hall. And as you walk up there, and that's the that's a, a, a sunset that's taking place at the moment. So you walk, walk up into this amazing space. So coming to, to UCT is is about joining a family, joining a team of people that are absolutely focused on ensuring that you have the best possible education. I want to take a few minutes now just to talk a little bit about um, the qualifications that we've got. And I also then want to talk about the fact that you can get mechatronics in two departments, in the Department of Mechanical Engineering and the Department of uh, Electrical Engineering. And there's often questions about that. So uh, I'm just going to take a, a few moments to, to talk about that. So firstly, let me uh, suggest to you that uh, I'm going to use an analogy of a, of a surgeon to give you a sense of, of why mechanical engineering department is something that you can, should consider. If you're wanting to be a surgeon or an anesthetist or a, a something like that, uh, that's not something that you actually study for directly. You first will do a general qualification. You'll do a uh, you'll be a general practitioner. And then if you're wanting to be a um, a surgeon, as an example, you will go off and you will study further and you'll specialize and be a surgeon. Um, we've also got a very similar view here in in our department. If you're wanting to be something like an aeronautical engineer or an automotive engineer or a biomedical engineer, as an example, um, you can go and study those directly, but our view actually is maybe what you should rather do is do a, a generalist degree, something like the degree that's offered by our department, which will give you a really good solid undergraduate base. And from that really solid base, you can go ahead and then choose where in the world you're going to go. It could be UCT, it could be somewhere else, and then study and specialize in the particular area that you might be interested in. Um, so, for example, if you and, and now I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, our department, the two degrees in our department. Uh, if you've got if you. Uh, I'm often asked sort of what is mechanical engineering or what is mechanical and mechatronic engineering? And, and sometimes it's a little bit difficult to articulate specifically. So let me use an analogy of um, of, say, uh, civil engineering. If I say civil engineering, you can develop a picture in your mind about what civil engineering could be, you know, bridges, roads, stormwater drainage, things like that. If I say um, chemical engineering, you, you get a picture in your mind about what chemical engineering could be. Um, and you, know, you, you, you think about uh, um, a, a applied chemistry, you think about all sorts of things like that, and you've got a picture in your head. If I say electrical engineering, you get a picture in your head what electrical engineering could be. Mechanical engineering is everything that's left after you take some of those other bits away, and which means that it's 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 quite a generalist degree. It gives you a solid base to be able to do all sorts of things. One of those things that we've got now is we've got the differentiation between mechanical on the one side and mecha mechanical and mechatronics on the other side. I'm going to forward to a slide now, which 
I don't expect you to be able to see. Um, it is a it is a slide that is on our mechanical engineering department website, um, and I, I urge you to go and have a look at it there. You'll be able to download it and see it in far more detail. But I'm using this just as a as a placeholder for me to be able to talk about some of the bits and pieces. Um, those of you that might be on big screens might be able to see some of this on the very furthest left hand column for me. You've got mechanical engineering in the middle. You've got mechanical and mechatronics. And then on the far side, you've got mechatronic engineering, which is in the Department of Electrical Engineering, as you can see by the title. So if I focus now in on what we call MMT as mechanical and mechatronic engineering and mechatronic engineering, which is we've got there as MEX. Uh, what you will not be able to see is uh, the, the content proportions, which is in the middle of the slide. And I'm just going to, to focus on that just for a moment. Um, the, the major difference between the mechanical and mechatronic, which is hosted in mechanical engineering, and mechatronics, which is hosted in electrical engineering, is that you've got, in mechanical engineering, our focus is far more on on um, mechanical systems. And in, make it, in the electric Department of Electrical Engineering, the focus is far more on electrical systems. So uh, as a way of describing that, if you consider the mechanical and mechatronic engineering, on the slide, although it's not very clear in the middle, shows that mechanics, okay, mechanical systems, is 50% of your degree program. In, the, in mechanical engineering degree, which is on the furthest left, the mechanics is at 65%. So you'll see we've had to remove some of that from the mechanical engineering degree to enable electrical and computers to come in. And you'll see there on the slide, if you can see it, it says at 25%. So for the mechanical and mechatronics engineering degree, mechanics is at 50% and electrical and computers is at 25%. So that's the electronics. In the mechatronics degree, the mechanics, as you, you might see on the slide, is at 10% and the electrical and computing is at 65%. So immediately, by knowing those two numbers, you can get a sense of the difference between the two. In the mechanical and mechatronics, there's a strong focus on mechanical systems and mechanics. It's 50% of the degree. In mechatronic engineering and electrical engineering, there's only 10% of mechanics, but there's a, a much larger amount of, elect of electronics and computing in the mechatronics qualification. All right, so those are the those are the, the difference between the two. There's a little note at the bottom of the mechanical and mechatronic engineering that says it's best for people with an interest in mechanical design, electronics, programming and control. And in the at bottom of the mechatronics column, it says best for people with a strong interest in electronics, programming and control of systems and would like an understanding of mechanisms. So if I can bring this down to a um, to a concrete example now, if you think of a robot, and many people in the audience are, are really keen on robots. The robot, if you think about the fact that in the mechanical system, the, 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 the mechanical system in the, me the mechanical and mechatronics degree, that's 50% of the, of the um, overall courses you're going to do. Your focus is going to be on creating the robotic structure. The robotic structure is going to be sound, it's going to do all the manipulation that it needs to do. And 25% of your program is going to be focused on the electronics that's associated with that robot, as well as the control needed to be able to manipulate and do the robot. Okay, so there's a very strong focus on the robot itself, with a smaller focus on the control system than the electronics that are needed to make it do the manipulations. In the Department of Electrical Engineering and Mechatronics, you, for the same robot, only 10% of your degree is focused on the robot structure itself where very much more is um, uh, very much more is hand is focused on the electronics and the robotics on the control of sorry on the electronics on the control of that robotic system. All right, so that's uh, a little bit about the difference between mechanical and mechatronic engineering. We will have an opportunity at the end to be able to uh, talk a little bit more about this in the Q and A session. All right, what I want to do is now. Um, move on to a few little facts about our building. I, I'm not very conscious of the time and the fact that we want some time for Q&A at the end. So I'm going to um, I, I'm going to now on a couple of slides just have some photographs of some of the spaces in our buildings. I'm going to go full screen again so you can see that. 
This is a, a, a photo of our workshop. We've got one of uh, the head of our workshop working our, uh, our computer controlled manufacturing machines. This is a, a, a milling machine where the computer controls exactly how the machine works to ma machine the material. Um, here are a whole variety of photos. The top right hand, the top left hand side is somebody working in our in our uh, mechanical and mechatronics workspace. Below that is our composites lab. Just to the left of that at the bottom is um, somebody working in our advanced manufacturing lab. Moving beyond that is one of our postgraduate students. Then we move into CFD and there's our, and our laser cutter is on the top row on the left. Uh, some more photos I want to highlight on the top right hand corner of that slide are is a group of our first year students. They were building um, steam cars. At the time, that's they built a little steam generator and the steam that came out rotated a wheel, which then it was racing across a, um, a, a racetrack. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to introduce you to Chase Newell. Chase is our senior class representative. Now, class representatives are a, are a really important uh, process uh, or, or part of our um, process in our department. They are the link between the the staff body and the student body. They are the, the way to be able to ensure that there's quality in the system, that if things are not going the way the students would like, they are the first port of call to start talking with the academics involved, the, 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 the support staff involved, to try and work through and ensure that everybody is, is able to be successful in their qualifications. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask our controller to be able to pass back um, to Chase. Chase is online and he will take over now. I'm going to mute myself and turn off my camera to be able to pass over to, to Chase. I'll be back in a moment. Um, sorry about that. We seem to have some technical difficulties. Um, Mr. Professor Reed, if you are still there. OK, um, well, no, no worry. What I'm going to do then, I'm, I'm, Chase, I'm sorry you don't have your, your moment in the sun, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, give just a, a few more comments about um, what's happening in the, the life of a student. Um, Chase had a, a nice presentation prepared and I'm, I'm sorry he doesn't have the opportunity to be able to share it with you just at the moment. Um, but Chase is one of those students that's very conscientious about his work. I, I had an engagement with him just the other day. Uh, remember I spoke about the, the importance of the class representative being the person that uh, ties together what's happening in the student body and, and the staff body. And what it was, was um, Chase, there was a, a, a particular um, academic staff member that had set a, um, a, a deadline for a particular uh, point in time, and the class had a whole lot of other things at that particular time. And I saw him negotiating with that staff member about uh, uh, having an extension to ensure that they were able to be as successful as possible. So I, I'm, I'm sorry that Chase can't, can't present with you now, but I just want to, to thank him sincerely for the work that he does. And to encourage any of you who do come and study with us, I want to in, encourage you to, to be a Chase, be somebody that stands up, be somebody that um, takes a leadership role and helps us ensure that we offer the quality education that we do. All right, I'm going to move on to my, to my last slide now. It's the slide that you saw previously. I'm going to make it go full screen again so you can see it. And what we've got there is we've got we've got the team. We've got this. We've got our staff. We've got you and we've got our campus. I'm really hoping that I'll be able to welcome you to our campus, welcome you to our staff and help you have that wonderful academic experience that we, we know that you richly deserve. The Department of Mechanical Engineering offers quality education. We have a quality team that will give you a experience that you'll never forget. What I want to do now then is to flick over to a session of questions and answers. Um, Carmelita is uh, uh, the departmental manager. She's been looking at the, the questions and answers. She, what she's also been doing is she's also been, been answering some online as it's been going. Um, and I'll ask Carmelita now. Carmelita, if you can unmute your mic and then you can ask the question and I will do my best to to, to help and answer. We've got 10 minutes left. Are we going to strictly keep to time so that those in the audience can can move on to their, their next venue? So over to you. Morning, everyone. The first question is, what field has the best or most job offers? That's it, 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 it's a good question to, to kick off with, I, I must say, uh, mostly because it's a question on everybody's lips. 
everybody wants to ensure that they are one of those people that are employed because of course we've all got obligations we've all got a, a critical desire to ensure that we are able to 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 provide for ourselves and our families um, i'm going to take a slight step sideways from that and i'll come directly back to answer that question what i want to just um point out to you that by choosing to follow a career in engineering in any of the engineering disciplines you are committing to make a contribution to the community around you. You're making a commitment to be a change agent to the world around you, because that's as an engineer, that's what you're committing to do. You have the ability to solve complex problems and those complex problems can make a massive change to the people around you. Um, and with, with having said that, the, 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 the government has recognized that engineering is a critical skill. And all the engineering programs and most of the engineering degrees that you can do are on the critical skills list, which indicates, in fact, that they are in short supply. So I think my answer to you is rather than try and choose the discipline where you can have the most chance of being employed, engineers are being employed. What you should rather do is find your passion. Study your passion because you're going to spend 45 years or so of your life in this job environment. You want to do something that excites you. You want to choose something that you feel is your passion. You will be employed in that and you will then have a, a, a great career in that space. Uh, I don't think I want to uh, say where the most highly, um, uh, where the biggest place to be employed is simply because it changes all the time. Uh, around the time of the 2010 World Cup, civil engineering was the flavor of the month. Everybody wanted to go and be involved with these amazing stadiums. It's it's less popular now because there's there, there, there aren't these big G was construction projects which are taking place. So depending on where we are at a particular moment in time, there are different things which are are, are, are more sought after. Right, Carmelita, back to you. Next question is, do students get placement into an engineering firm? So if you study in the um, in the traditional research focused universities like UCT, Stellenbosch, uh, Witts, um, uh, Northwest University, UKZN, etc. Um, our, we don't, we don't, as an academic institution, place you in, an, in a work environment after you leave. We will give you your qualification, we will um, give you the education that you need, and then you will be well set to be able to find your employment. Kamalita, back to you. As someone who wants to pursue a career in IT, would it be best to take mechanical and megatronics or just megatronics? So if you wanted to pursue a, a, a degree in IT, um, it, it's an interesting a pathway that you've chosen to get there through engineering. But interestingly, actually, it's an excellent pathway. We find that a significant number of our engineering in general, our graduates are snapped up by 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 programming houses, by um, financial services institutions, etc. Because of the particular way that we educate our students to be able to deal with uncertainty and deal with complex problems. So, so as an engineer, you deal with complex problems and complexity. So those skills are translatable into a variety of different fields. So if you're specifically wanting to go into IT in the classical IT space of, of computer programming, network infrastructure, um, and, and th those IT type of skills, then it actually really doesn't matter which engineering you do because it's, 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 the, it's the generic engineering um, uh, uh, skills that you're going to leverage when you go into IT. Uh, I suggest rather that what you do is you you choose the one that you're most passionate about. So you're actually interested in what you're doing and you and you embrace it. If you do study in our our department, the first two and a half um, years are common to both mechanical and mechanical and mechatronic, because what we do is we take the specialist mechanical subjects um, and the special we take specialist mechanical and special specialist me, uh, mechanical and, and we take we, we offer you specialist mechanical subjects and specialist subjects in control and electronics to make up the two different degrees. Um, so if you do join our department, you do have two years to actually find out what your passion is and then choose which way that you want to go. Right, Carmelita, back to you. How successful are undergrad students at getting jobs in South Africa? So undergraduate students, I, I, I can't talk from uh, all institutions. I did indicate earlier that uh, we are on the critical skills list, uh, which means that the, the government has indicated that as an area that it, it's absolutely 
in, critical for for people to be in, um, educated in that area because there's a, a, a dire shortage of it. Um, but what is quite clear is that our students from UCT are employed. What you can't do, and, and this is just a reality of life, you can't exit any institution and expect to have the corner office, the fancy luxury four by four vehicle and uh, a, a, a six dollar paycheck. OK, so, uh, sorry, six figure paycheck. It, it just doesn't happen. You have to get work experience. You have to you know, build your profile and then you will sort of increasingly get promotions through the system. Um, but our, our students who graduate from our department do get employed. Absolutely. Kamita, back to you. Um, who, would it be possible to swap mechanical and mechatronic programs during my studies? Yeah, so let, let me um, be quite clear about this. If we are talking about the Department of Mechanical Engineering, in which there are two programs, mechanical engineering and mechanical and mechatronics. Those two are the same for the first two and a bit years, and you can change between them at any time. OK, if you are comparing mechanical and mechatronics on the side, just keep the same hand with mechatronics in electrical engineering, their first years between the two are very different. It's possible to change between them, but there's significant pain on changing because there are certain subjects that you wouldn't have done. So if you are on the if you're on the four year program in the one and you change to the other one, it's quite possible that you're going to lengthen your your degree qualification time. So it's quite important for you to decide which which side of the, the, the road that you want to be on when you uh, when you enter. Of course, for the first week or two, you can switch um, if there's place in one or the other. It's not an, it's not an automatic switch. Um, uh, like, for example, this year in our department, we our target is 135 students in our first year. We've got 202. So anybody who wants to switch into our program, we just don't have space for them at the moment. Kamalita, back to you. We're running out of time. So the last question, um, do I need to study mechanical engineering first if I want to eventually go into biomedical engineering? Um, in this country, yes, as far as I know, uh, there's no place that you can go and study biomedical engineering from your first year. Um, my understanding is that biomedical engineering in, in this country starts typically with an undergraduate qualification in mechanical engineering and then you study your postgraduate in biomed and you can do that in our department start and then you can move to the med school and the medical school and there is biomedical engineering there. Internationally, there are places that you can do biomedical engineering from day one, um, but as I suggested earlier, I, I'm I am personally of the view that you should rather do a general undergraduate qualification and then specialize in the area like automotive engineering or uh, biomed or uh, yeah aeronautical or whatever, whatever it might be. OK, so then um, Chase is suggesting, and thanks for that, Chase, that um, UJ, if, if you are wanting to study biomed from day one, just look at University of Johannesburg or look at, um, I think the other one was bits that, that um, Chase had put on the screen. Thanks, Chase. We've got two minutes left. We've probably got some time to squeeze in one more. Um, Let's see quickly. Um... Are there specific institutions or firms that offer bursaries in the field of megatonic studies? Yeah, uh, that's a really good question. I'm not going to, I, I can't really answer the question the way you might like, but they, uh, what I suggest you do is go onto the UCT website and then you go to undergraduate, you look for under, undergraduate funding opportunities. And there's a very extensive website there talking about the opportunities for funding um, from UCT as well as pointers to where they um, offers of bursaries from across the country. And in fact, if you just Google engineering bursaries, um, you'll find that there are bulletin boards that are set up specifically to enable you to, to be able to find those, those bursaries. All right, we've got uh, about 30 seconds left. I want to really thank you sincerely for being here today. I saw in the list where people were from, it's really all over the place. And it's, it's wonderful to be able to be open to so many people from so many different areas. I genuinely hope I have the opportunity of meeting some of you next year. Wonderful. Thank you for spending the time with Mechanical Engineering this morning.